بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی سالڈ لیکوڈ ایکسٹریکشن اور دس از آلسو کال لیچنگ اینڈ بائی دا وے دس از لاسٹ ٹاپک وچ واز پارٹ آف آور سبجیکٹ دس سبجیکٹ سیپریشن پروسیس سو دس از دا لاسٹ سیپریشن ٹیکنیک وچ وی ہیو ٹو اسٹڈی اینڈ ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ڈسکس دس لیچنگ فنامنا اٹس انٹروڈکشن and uh, mechanism then there is some model related to this I uh, mean equilibrium stage model for leaching and washing which we have to discuss so uh, uh, by the way this uh, uh, topic leaching is being covered from separation process by Cedar and Hanley third edition and it's chapter 16 in third edition uh this fourth edition which we were already following throughout the semester that didn't contain a uh, leaching topic so leaching topic was included in only third edition due to this uh, in the start of semester maybe you remember i asked you to also I mean have third edition because few topics we will cover from there so this is the topic which we are going to study from the third edition uh, already when i uploaded the books in the start of the semester so you have third edition there if uh, you didn't download just go to the folder of books and get downloaded this third edition so that you can study the leaching topic from third edition uh, before this just to summarize uh, we discussed uh, membrane separation and in membranes uh, when we covered all those contents in four weeks that included basic introduction to the membrane membrane material membrane modules and then their application on industrial scale for various phenomena like reverse osmosis uh, membranes then there were gas separation membranes and uh, finally in the last lecture we discussed power vaporization membranes before that we discussed liquid liquid extraction and uh, and uh, li before liquid liquid extraction actually absorption was detailed and discussed uh, i mean uh, throughout the uh, seven weeks or eight weeks before midterm uh, so this last topic which we have to cover overall uh, uh, here i am just uh, going to cover major introduction and this equilibrium stage model or they also called it sometime uh, counter current washing model so this we are going to cover but only one thing which will be left that was uh, related to mass transfer phenomena in the leaching and uh, the numerical stuff related to that which we can't cover because this is the last lecture in which uh, i will just introduce you with the leaching and we can't cover that uh, only one topic so overall alhamdulillah we have done well uh, throughout this pandemic and everything alhamdulillah we managed to cover our syllabus uh, so let's start with this uh, main leaching uh, what is leaching or uh, what is this solid liquid extraction before this you studied liquid liquid extraction so just to recall liquid liquid extraction actually involved two liquids one liquid was our feed and if you remember at that time the liquid which was uh, feed that consist of two parts one was carrier and other was uh, I mean some solute inside that feed and uh, an external liquid another liquid was introduced to the system and that was named as a solvent so that solvent actually extracted some components from this feed and uh, those component were extracted which we were looking to be separated <coughs> so here somehow same thing which we are going to have that's the solid liquid extraction so inside this let's look what does this mean leaching are sometimes also referred as solid liquid or liquid solid mean any name you can give it extraction process involve the removal of soluble fraction of a solid material by a liquid solvent uh, so it it is somehow similar to the liquid liquid extraction that in the liquid liquid extraction you used to introduce some external solvent or a liquid so same here you are introducing external solvent or a liquid and you are extracting you are removing some part of the so solid material or uh, mean removal of soluble fraction of solid material with the help of this liquid uh, mean if i compare it with the liquid liquid extraction there was one so instead of solid that was liquid which was existing in the form of feed we used to call it as a feed 
So, at that time that feed consisted of one uh, some some carrier or solvent as well as some part was solute which was recovered or which was extracted by another introduced liquid. So, here same uh, instead of liquid in the liquid solid extraction you will have your feed as a solvent. So, that feed solid will contain two parts some part will be like uh, our required part which we want to extract that is the solid uh, soluble fraction of that solid material. Soluble means soluble in this liquid, the liquid which we are using as an extracting media so that some part is soluble in this while other are not soluble. Uh, so, this uh, leaching actually involves the recovery of substance from a solid like in liquid extraction you are recovering some uh, substance from a liquid feed, but here your feed is a solvent you are recovering some substance from a solid by contact with a liquid solvent. Uh, for example, here one example is recovery of oil from the seeds by organic solvent. So, we can recover various oils from seeds mean uh, by using organic solvents so actually what these organic solvent will do uh, they will extract some oils, oils are also organic in nature and through from the seeds uh, they will consist some cover there are some fibers and inside those fiber there will be some oil. So, that is extracted with the help of some organic solvent and uh, related to this extraction or solid liquid extraction or leaching uh, I, I gave you one simple example of like tea beads or coffee beads when you extract some material from those coffee beads or tea beads or tea leaves uh, in the uh, hot water. So, hot water now introduced that is the liquid and we are extracting some material from tea leaves or tea beads uh, mean those tea beads are a solid or our feed and out of those beads we extract some component or we will call it like soluble fraction of those components is extracted by hot water. So, that is one example of the leaching I mean common simple example of leaching which we already studied in the start of semester. Uh, so, this was just definition or brief introduction of leaching that simply it involved one solid and the liquid and the purpose of liquid is to extract some parts of uh, mean solid uh, and those parts which are extracted are actually soluble inside this liquid which is externally introduced. So, let us look at the mechanism how does this occur or how, how does this happen. The solute uh, diffuses from inside the solid into the surrounding. By the way, this part is called solute which we are removing uh, I mean here he mentioned soluble fraction which you are removing with the help of liquid it is named as solute or the leachant. Uh, so, that solute or leachant that that diffuses from inside the solid into the surrounding solvent. Uh, when you add those solids inside some solvent for example, these tea leaves when you add them in the uh, liquid water. So, what happens some parts some uh, some chemicals are extracted from those tea leaves and they enter into the liquid solvent. So, that is how does this occur diffusion of those solute from inside the solid to the surrounding. Uh, either the extracted solids uh, fraction mean here when you are extracting something now solid will be left without those components. So, sometime mean it depends either uh, which of those is of our use. So, either the extracted solid fraction or insoluble solid or both may be valuable product. For example, when you are using this tea leaves, so at the end you just throw those tea leaves or tea beads because they are of no use to you. Uh, you just I mean suppose dip tea bag inside a cup of hot water and you extract the some some part of the this and then finally, you just take away your uh, I mean tea bag and throw it away. Uh, because that is of no use, but that extracted stuff which is now part of water that is of use which you drink. Uh, so, it depends on the application either uh, both are mean of uh, your use sometime I mean uh, some uh, only one of those is of your use. Uh, so, it depends uh, on the application. So, leaching is widely used in various industries uh, for uh, for example, for metallurgical natural products and food industries this is uh, widely used technique for example, for metallurgical mean extraction of ores you can use for the extraction of various ores. Uh, so, this is a metallurgical application and one uh, major application which hopefully you are aware about uh, like uh, extraction of uranium. Uh, 
because uranium uh, in nuclear industry is extracted from the um, in various mines uranium ore. So, extraction of uranium is done with the help of this technique which is called leaching and uh, there are various techniques for uh, the extraction of uranium you can go through that. Uh, by Google it. So, uh, some techniques are uh, involved some acid, some involve some base mean you can use either alkaline solution, acidic solution to extract uranium from various ores. Uh, sometime even in situ extraction take place uh, like you inject some liquid inside the main mine and you extract uranium. So, there are various techniques used in the world for extraction of this uranium that is one common example where leaching is being used actually. And what does uh, that liquid suppose either alkaline or acidic solution will do? It will just extract uranium from that solid ore and will come back and we will just get it separated from that acid and liquid that is another like later process separation process. Uh, so, equipments are available mean for this leaching either batch equipment, semi continuous or continuous operating so all type of uh, various equipments are used based on the application in various industries. Uh, so, effluents from a leaching stage are essentially solid free liquid finally, as you look at uh, these mean for example, tea leaves. So, at the end uh, when you have done with the leaching what you will get uh, that is something solid free uh, liquid uh, that liquid which does not contain solid, but it contains some, some part of the solid which is now dissolved or soluble inside this liquid. So, uh, then this is named as overflow mean top layer which is separated after extraction is overflow that is the liquid which contains some parts of the solid which are soluble, but totally there will be not like solid uh, due to this we call it like solid free liquid called overflow and there will be wet solids they leave as an underflow. Uh, actually the solids which are leaving from that uh, liquid liquid uh, sorry this liquid solid extraction equipment or leaching equipment uh, those solid usually contain some part of the liquid due to this he is calling they will be like wet liquid and they flow as a underflow. Uh, up, uh, overflow mean that will leave from the top of the equipment and underflow will leave from the bottom of the equipment. So, uh, when you extract this in the first stage for example, you bring in contact this solid with the liquid. So, th that liquid extract uh, some part of uh, those uh, chemical which you want to extract from the solid. So, at the end when solid is leaving from the top that is contain some part of uh, those extracted component and it is leaving as overflow. But at the same time some liquid which is leaving as with the solid as a wet solid. So, that will also contain this liquid will also contain uh, some part of uh, those extracted component because uh, this is a uh, top liquid is not separate one overall liquid is homogeneous throughout the main equipment. So, uh, the liquid which is leaving with the solvents uh, solids even also contain some part of those solutes those leachants. So, in order to reduce the concentration of those solute in the liquid portion of the underflow, underflow mean this liquid which was leaving with the solid and making it wet. So, that liquid will contain some part of this solute. So, in order to reduce that concentration leaching is often accompanied by a counterflow washing stages. So, sometime this is not only one stage and most of the time this is not only one stage you have more than one stages. Uh, I will give you the example of this for example, you dip the tea bag in the hot water, you just mix it up for some time or give it some time so that some part of that tea is extracted to your water. Now, after uh, some time you just take away this uh, tea bag. So, when you are taking away this tea bag you most of the time you see uh, you used to squeeze that uh, main uh, tea bag with the help of spoon. So, why you squeeze actually you are just removing the water which was part of this uh, and uh, that water will also contain some parts of this uh, tea which you want to drink. So, this the uh, I mean this phenomena of uh, counter current somehow you can make it like similar that is something counter current washing. Later on uh, in this lecture we will discuss how these counter current washing stages take place, but for example, to understand here just uh, I mean keep this in mind like these washing stages are somehow something similar like what we do here in uh, like uh, squeezing of this tea bag when we are taking away it from hot water. So, so that we can recover maximum liquid part as well as that solute which was uh, part of the liquid. Uh, 
so the combined process overall like you will have leaching stage and then washing stages if there are number of stages so at the end combined process produce final overflow referred to as extract mean uh, when you have more than one stages definitely this overflow will take place from one stage and it will then go to the next stage and then it move and jump to the next stage and so on so at the end when it leaves from the last stage so it's called like extract and uh, which contain extract you extract is that component which is overflowing and overflow you know overflowing is that which is the liquid or a solvent so uh, which contains some of the solvent and most of the solute so this this stream overflowing stream is the your solvent containing part of the solute with it so that's named as extract here now and the uh, uh, final underflow the extracted uh, are leach solid underflow are mostly the solids and they are like extracted or leached solid because we have extracted some of parts of those solid and these are most of the time wet which are wet with almost pure solvent i mean uh, that solvent which was added so that will be somehow part of the solid and these are the extracted solid which will be leaving from the last stage so at the end of the day this underflow which leave from the final stage is named as extracted or leached solid uh so this is the one of one stage for uh, mean this leaching is shown to you here overall you can just see that uh, there is one stage in which mixing is taking place and then there is separation uh why we will look at this for example you bring in the feed here as well as the solvent so uh in this phenomena in industry for leaching you have to mix them up so you usually go for some mixing part some impeller type equipment to mix those uh why uh, so that maximum mass transfer and extraction take place so after this you just bring it or give some settling time so for settling you just uh, put it to a basin which will uh, give separation at the end based on the gravity because solid will settle down it will go down and uh, liquid will be extracted to the top now because the purpose of this solvent was to extract some part of the feed this feed is in the form of solid so some part is extracted and become its uh, main part of this solvent so this will be like solvent as well as some solute and that's leaving as extract as a flow overflow as we have seen in the last slide extract will consist of solvent as well as solute solute that was extracted from the solid and then the bottom portion of this are underflow that's the spent solid spent solid are which we called as leached solid uh, this is wet usually and it contain some part of the solvent as well as there is uh, I mean extracted solid uh, I mean which is now deprived of those solute uh this is one stage suppose you have uh, next stage so both of these will jump to the next stage they will again come in contact with each other and more separation actually take place and uh, uh, so on actually not separation overall we say like here now this spent solid which is wet solid that will contain the liquid now when this liquid or solvent is leaving with this that will contain some part of the solute and uh, in order to recover that solute we will again bring them in contact and we will try to get as much extract as possible uh so uh, ideally the soluble solids are perfectly uh, separated from the insoluble solid mean uh, those soluble solids the part of the solid which are soluble in the solvent they are perfectly separated mean you can get even 100% separation from the insoluble solid part uh but solvent is distributed to both the products uh, what does this mean like here we have seen that the solvent which was introduced here that is part of the extract as well as this underflow stream as well as overflow stream so that's actually is uh, naming it here like that distributed to both products I mean overflow and as well as in uh, underflow it is distributed among both a uh, while underflow will contain most of the insoluble solid the, all of the insoluble solid even and top stream will contain or overflow will contain most of the soluble solid but some will also be part of this uh, main uh, underflow stream uh therefore uh, at the end of the day now 
the solvent is usually expensive and you have to recover it it is not like wasted uh, so there uh, you will have another equipment in which at the end you will just separate the solvent from both of the soluble as well as insoluble solids so due to this we say like we have additional processing of the extract and the leach solid extract which was the top layer and the leach uh, solid which was the bottom layer as underflow uh, so they go necess I mean for some necessary processing to recover solvent to be recycled so this phenomenon takes place you have to recover your solvent for example here you can see like we have a hexane ethanol that's the solvent which is introduced with this uh, algae biomass so you just bring them in contact and when you are bringing you are extracting here uh, here stirring is taking place uh, this is the sign of stirrer so just after stirring uh, you will extract some part of this uh, I mean uh, biomass that is transferred to the hexane because these contain usually the oils which are extracted so those will be uh, extracted to these uh, I mean hydrocarbon hexane ethanol. Uh, so after this now you have to this is the first stage like we have seen in the uh, last slide uh, first stage of extraction is mixing so here mixing takes place after that you have to give them some settling time uh, so you just bring it to some settler and uh, here again density based separation always takes place easily because solid has higher density and that will settle down while liquid is at the top and then at the end of this I uh, mean uh, this solid along with some liquid leave as a residue uh, from the bottom and from top you get this uh, I mean crude uh, uh, like here he is naming it like crude extract uh, the top layer is extract so simple you can call it like extract. Uh, so, extract and this is uh, bottom layer which is uh, spent solid or residue. Uh, so, after next stage like for example, this still solid residue as you know that that contain some of the liquid and uh, that liquid or solvent which is part of this will contain uh, those oils which you were looking for. So, in order to recover more of those uh, you go for this stage in next stage you bring it this in contact with some more solvent. So, when you will bring it some uh, in contact with the more solvent you will be able to extract it a bit more. Uh, this is the same similar stage like here uh, I mean mixing takes place and again you will have some stage like this which will be like uh, somehow. Uh, uh, separation stage. So, after separation stage top layer extract to way meets with this layer and uh, they go to the next stage while this solid will be now final spent solid will be uh, removed from the system which he did not show here. Uh, so, uh, next now process is actually to remove the solvent to get separated the solvent. So, what you will do just uh, bring this extract to some separating funnel in which you give it some time. So, after for some time mean it gets separated to two phases. Uh, mean uh, it depends on the application sometime it is not only like this simple settling sometime you can just get separated these chemical like extracted and the original solvent with the help of distillation some other separation technique but you will need some separation technique just to get them separated. Uh, so, when you get them separated later solvent is recycled here and the other product is obtained. So, this is all about the mechanism. Uh, next uh, like now we know that this solid liquid extraction is used in the industry. So, what are major industrial application like initially we saw that it is used for in metallurgical some food industry. So, what are major application where it is used? Uh, so, industrial application of this leaching include first of removal of sulfur from uh, sorry copper from the ores using sulfuric acid. So, sulfuric acid here is a solvent and those ore is a solid you know that ore is a mixture uh, I mean that is uh, uh, not only the copper the, it will exist in the form of some other chemical like maybe carbon nitrate, carbon uh, I mean sulphate or uh, I mean various different uh, salts are possible which are extracted from the mine. So, in order to separate that specifically copper from this we use sulfuric acid. So, sulfuric acid will extract from that ore only the copper and all other is left as a spent solid. Then recovery of gold from or using sodium cyanide solution. So, this is used for recovery of gold. Uh, 
uh, then there is extraction of sugar from sugar beets using hot water. So, this is a uh, different example as compared weather. So, this is this will be example of food industry in which what you are doing you are extracting the sugar from sugar beets uh, by using hot water. So, when you bring them in contact with the hot water, hot water extract the sugar from those sugar beets and then solid residue is left. Extraction of tannin from the tree bark using water. I um, mean uh, removal of tannin from uh, tree bark using water uh, just uh, another example I mean. Uh, then there is removal of caffeine from green coffee beans using supercritical CO2 or even you use uh, I mean they extract this coffee uh, caffeine from the coffee with the help of hot water. So, this application from food industry. Then recovery of protein and other natural products from bacterial cells. Uh, so, this is somehow uh, I mean uh, the application of uh, you can say uh, overall biochemistry side application. So, the, these are the various leaching application which on in which leaching is used for extraction of various components uh, and uh, in all of these applications your feed will be a solid like these will be or there is a sugar beet, there is a tree bark. So, all these coffee beans. So, all these are the solids uh, finally and you extract them with the help of some liquid. So, all liquids are described here. Uh, so, next and uh, I think last part of this lecture which is about equilibrium state model for leaching and washing. As uh, f I mean two three slides back you remember that we discussed that uh, most of the time uh, there is uh, leaching and then washing stages. So, this model actually discussed those uh, that phenomena of leaching and washing. So, let us look at this in detail uh, equilibrium stage is called equilibrium state model for leaching and washing and sometime also named as counter current washing method. So, uh, in this method actually what you do uh, this in counter current leaching and washing method or a system is a simplest model for continuous system when we describe the continuous leaching system leaching and washing system. So, this counter current model is the best uh, main model which is the simplest model and use mostly uh, for uh, main discussion for design for calculation. So, it uh, this model assumed that the solid feed consists of solute that is completely soluble in the solvent. I mean this is considered that uh, mean solid feed contains some portion which is called solute or leachant. So, that is soluble completely soluble in the solvent. You bring it in contact with some solvent and it will completely dissolve in that solvent while inert part uh, are inert substance or the carrier is not soluble. As uh, I told you like solid will consist of two parts similar like the liquid liquid extraction like in the liquid liquid extraction your feed consists of liquid that contains some parts which can be extracted with the help of other liquid and some just stay as such. So, here again means solid consists of two parts one part is soluble in the solvent while other part is not soluble. So, that is we call it like inert substance or the carrier. Uh, Let us look at this. So, this is the I mean leaching and washing counter current uh, I mean counter current uh, model. So, in this uh, just look uh, at the diagram first of all here this is one stage L leaching stage. I uh, mean you have leaching stage and as you remember we said that usually leaching stage is only one stage then there are other washing stages. And uh, I told you already but again here I will discuss this point that why you are looking for the washing stages. So, what uh, in this stage you can see that there is some S inert solid solid feed overall just can I will just define these S F uh, what does this we mean different terminologies uh, here are mentioned ok just let us look at them S. S is the mass flow rate of inert solids constant from state to state. Just think S mass flow rate of inert solid because we said our feed will consist of two solid parts one is soluble in the liquid and other is inert carrier. So, when uh, we are saying that is insoluble, so it is mean it will remain constant throughout all the stages due to this just represented with as simple uh, mass flow rate of inert solid which is constant throughout the stages. Then there is V other V I uh, mean V indicates mass flow rate of entering solvent or overflow liquid solvent plus solute which carries 
or which varies from stage to stage. Uh, so, here you can see this solvent which is entering at n plus through n plus 1 stage. So, uh, we will talk about these number 1, 2 and later, but just consider this V is entering which is pure solvent at the start, but as he said that this will be the pure solvent, but later on because this solvent uh, extract some part of the solid. So, this will be later become solid uh, solvent plus solute and uh, mean this V and this V will vary. Why it will vary? Because initially it is pure solvent, but later on when it is passing through various stages, it is extracting solute from each stage when it is passing, it is extracting solute and the concentration of solute will keep on increasing in this V. Uh, so, due to this, its composition will be uh, our amount will be varying throughout the equipment at each stage. Uh, then there is also this mass flow rate of the underflow liquid. Like here when uh, you see that uh, our through each stage there will be overflow liquid as well as underflow liquid. So, this V which was named as like entering solvent are the overflow liquid. So, similarly we will have something called mass flow rate of underflow liquid. So, here underflow liquid will be passing through this uh, each stage that will be part of actually this solid uh, means so this solid is not passed as a solid, it, it, it is wet solid, so it will contain some liquid, so its flow rate is this L, mass flow rate of the underflow liquid. And this is usually the solvent plus solute both because as I told you earlier that the when this mixing takes place, the liquid which is separated as a overflow as well as underflow that will contain solute. So, both of this even overflowing liquid as well as underflowing liquid will contain some part of the solute. And uh, these stages, the washing stages, we are just bringing these stages because we want to reduce the amount of this solute which is being carried out in these stages. Uh, so, overall when you will just keep on moving from here uh, stage 1 towards an amount of this uh, mean solute will keep on decreasing inside this underflow. Why? Because we will be extracting it in each next stage towards uh, solute towards top layer towards overflow we will be extracting it due to this solute amount will be varying and when its amount will be changing due to this overall this flow rate will be changing from each stage to stage. So, hopefully now you are aware that overall here we will be talking about three streams first stream is only the solid which are inert solid they will stay same throughout according to this model like the equilibrium stage model it is considered that they remain same later on in the next slide we have to look at some other assumption of this model. Uh, so, based on that this amount of solid inert solid remains same. And then there is V solvent which is entering at the initially it will be only solvent, but later on it will carry the solute with it as it will pass through the various stages. So, uh, its amount will be varying. Then there is L is the mass flow rate of underflow liquid. So, it initially will contain some liquid which is solvent as well as solute, but as it keep on moving from stage 1 to n we will be extracting or we will be removing amount of solute due to this its amount will be decreasing. Uh, so, it is assumed here leaching is assumed to be a rapid such that it is completing in a single stage even like leaching can be completed in a single stage you may be do not need more than one stages uh, only in one stage uh, I mean complete leaching can take place. But uh, there is a problem of this leaching after this leaching like in this stage when this solid and the liquid came in contact uh, part of the I mean solid was extracted that became solute, solute became part of the main extract layer, uh, but when this wet solid is leaving so that contains some amount of solute. So, this leaching stage is followed by a series of one or more washing stages. Why those washing stages? Washing as its name indicate you are washing something. Uh, what we are washing actually we are washing the solute as it keep on moving from these stages to the next stage. We will be removing the amount of this solute from this underflow towards uh, I mean overflow. Uh, this use for removal or reduce the concentration of solute in the liquid adhere to the solid in the ordinary flow. Because this solid cannot be only the solid it will always contain some liquid because solid has tendencies to carry liquid with them. So, when this liquid is being carried we will try to extract as much solute as possible. 
due to this you have a lot of like hair stages which are called washing stages and, uh, and like y here indicates I mean later on in the formula that is used so y is the mass fraction of the solute in the overflow liquid while x is the mass fraction of solute in the underflow liquid if I tell you initially y will be small here y will be small initially when it solvent enter even y is 0 but it y will keep on increasing in this direction y will increase and x x will be highest at the start but later it will keep on decreasing because x he said this is the mass fraction of the solute in the underflow so initially it will be maximum here but it will keep on decreasing as you keep on moving in this direction so overall i can say its amount will also be higher in this direction on the right side on the left side its amount will be keep on decreasing i mean in underflow liquid its solute amount will be decreasing uh, its name like here it is just indicated with like uh, leaching stage then there is uh, washing stage so washing stages can be more than one as we said so like it is named first from the side from where solvent is uh, sorry your feed is entering like solid feed entrance side is named as one so after that uh, two and so on you read to the end stage so this will be liquid underflow which is called extracts or extracted solid spent solid which is leaving from end stage here and then there is a solvent entering from n plus 1 stage because stage after this pose n is 25 so this is coming after 25 so that's something coming from 25 26 so 25 plus 1 and this enters then it keep on moving and finally uh, from stage 1 washing stage it enter to the leaching stage and in leaching stage it come in contact with this solid and then I uh, mean maximum extraction take place here and then it leaves as a extract final extract liquid extract solvent. So this is all about the phenomena here uh, why we call it counter current as you can see easily that uh, your feed and solvent are moving in the counter current direction throughout the process. Uh, so uh, overall this model discuss also the equilibrium between leaching and the washing or uh, overall an ideal leaching or washing stage is defined when, when you look at the system in which you discuss this leaching and washing because there will be many question uh, raising in your mind that it is possible some solid this which you are calling only inert it can also become part of the main liquid stream and some other possibilities are there so let us discuss those possibilities so they are considered uh, in this model they are just assumed as ideally. So, an ideal leaching or washing stage is defined by Baker. This is one of the scientists uh, uh, I mean who has worked on this. So, he considered that first of all any entering solid solute is completely dissolved inside the liquid in the stage any entering solid uh, sorry any entering solid solute the solutes for part of the solid which you want to extract so that is completely dissolve into the liquid in the first a uh, like leaching stage in the stage mean leaching stage assuming that liquid contain sufficient solvent this liquid which we are just bringing it as a solvent that should be sufficient in amount when it is sufficient in amount it is considered that all extraction of the solid uh, takes place here in this stage mean uh, initially when you will start this process just consider there will be only solvent coming here and there will be the uh, this feed coming here so when they come in contact in any other state there is nothing so uh, I mean just it will pass from here directly to there and you are entering the feed when they come in contact maximum we say that all extraction takes place here now after this extra extraction definitely some liquid is leaving as extract and some become part of underflow with the solid so later on in this stage some solute is carried out with that liquid but all solid uh, I mean this solute part was extracted with the liquid in this stage this is the first assumption the second assumption is the uh, composition of the liquid in the stage is uniform throughout including any liquid with the pores of inert uh, within the pores of inert solid we consider here when this liquid has extracted the solutes uh, I mean from the solid so throughout the stage throughout e one stage mean when you consider either stage one either uh, I mean extraction stage one uh, sorry washing stage one or end stage or I mean leaching stage so throughout all these stages I mean when you just consider only one stage in one stage all the composition of liquid is same just we consider here like for example in this leaching stage all the liquid which is uh, inside this will have throughout the whole composition actually what we consider when we consider complete same composition throughout the equipment 
hopefully you remember from reaction engineering that when you com consider complete mixing so this is complete mixing here when complete mixing takes place we consider that the concentration throughout the uh, I mean unit is the same and when something is leaving from here liquid will have same concentration as this as well as underflow liquid which is leaving will have same concentration same composition so composition of the liquid is uniform but in next stage when we will go definitely it will vary from the first stage but that will be co constant throughout the same stage and so on. I uh, mean solute is not adsorbed on the surface of inner solid. The solute which we were removing from the solid that is not I mean uh, adsorbed on the surface of inner solid uh, because you may think like somehow like when this is uh, uh, I mean extracted so that can occur, that can become part of the uh, I mean surface of the solid that can adsorb so that's that's possibility is just neglected here that it is not adsorbed so only we consider that that solute which is uh, I mean desorb which is extracted from the solid that is now only dissolve inside liquid that is not uh, mean adsorb on the surface of solids. Then there is next assumption like inert solids leaving in the underflow from each stage are wet with the liquid. So, inert solids leaving in the underflow. Uh, these inert solids uh, which did not mean dissolve, so li leaving in the underflow from each are wet with the liquid, I mean they are not dry, they always will contain some liquid. Such that mass ratio of the solvent in that liquid, I mean mass ratio of the solvent in that liquid or the total liquid, suppose uh, this liquid will contain more than one component due to this he is saying like solvent in the liquid or the total liquid to the inner solid is constant from stage to stage. What does this mean? It is mean like if you take the ratio of the I mean mass of this solvent to the uh, I mean solid this remains constant throughout this. Uh, this is obvious from here if you remember we said that inner solid S will remain constant throughout. So, when S remains constant this when solid specific amount of solid suppose you consider that this is 1 kg of the solid. So, that will also carry some specific amount of the liquid for example, it carries 0.5 kg of the liquid. So, that 0.5 kg divided by this 1 kg. So, it will be constant throughout the equipment throughout all the stages as he mentioned in this assumption. Okay, based on the assumption 2 which was what uh, that composition of the liquid in the stage is uniform in one stage any stage which you just pick. So, throughout that stage we consider that composition of liquid is constant or uniform. So, because of this point of uniformity mean uh, consideration, concentration of the solute in overflow is equal to that in the liquid portion of the underflow. Uh, this means as I already told you that when you consider complete mix for example, CSTR continuous stirred tank reactor. So, in that reactor you consider that anything which is leaving from this have the same composition as composition inside the reactor. So, similar applies here like when any stream either it is leaving as a overflow or underflow it will have same composition and when it will have same composition it is mean amount of the solute will be constant uh, or will be equal actually not constant I should say it, it will be equal like uh, either you take some sample from overflow from inside the equipment or from underflow. So, he says that this is actually equivalent to equilibrium assumption which I already told you. Uh, overflow contain no solid as uh, initially it was said that the inert solids are not do not become the part of the liquid. So, they do not leave as a overflow they will be only leaving as a wet solid and from the bottom of the equipment. Solvent is not vaporized, adsorbed or crystallized mean solvent uh, which entered from the first stage uh, mean uh, I should say not first it is n plus 1 stage. So, that remains constant throughout the equipment the solvent which entered from here is actually he as he said mean uh, this enters suppose 1 kg. So, it, it will leaving at the end somehow uh, mean at the this stage if last stage we just consider 1 kg will be distributed be between this and the final which will become part of the wet. But it is not like evaporated, it is not crystallized, it is not reacted throughout the whole system. So, these are all assumptions which are considered for this equilibrium stage model for leaching and washing. After this if we uh, because we are short of the time this is the last lecture. So, I have to finish stop it here, but only one topic 
topic uh, of related to this leaching was like suppose if we have another lecture we can easily do that that's uh, its use of all these assumption for the mass transfer and then and just uh, mean to solve numerical problem but already you have done a lot so just uh, go through all those stuff means try to solve those problem leave its problem just you should know the theory you should be aware about its basics at least and all the stuff which we have discussed especially this uh, I mean counter current uh, equilibrium washing model. Uh, so, thank you so much. Um, uh, I will just uh, summarize all the stuff which we started like leaching is also called liquid solid extraction in which you bring in contact one solid with the liquid and the purpose is uh, to extract some part of the solids towards the liquid so that we can just get them separated. And then we, uh, we have seen the mechanism how does it take place they come in contact they mix with each other and later you get them separated and uh, the top layer is the overflow or extract mean which is the liquid containing uh, or the solvent containing some solute and the from bottom usually solids are leaving as a wet uh, mean wet solids. So, then we have seen at the end the equilibrium strain model that is counter current model most widely used for these uh, I mean techniques and in that shows that usually you will have one leaching stage, but there are number of washing stages and washing in washing stages actually you are decreasing the amount of solute which is being carried with the wet solid uh, and uh, here remember that solid did not absorb anything of those solute and actually this uh, solute is being carried out with the liquid which is part of wet solid. Uh, thank you so much and Allah Hafiz.